Hi there, I'm Ezekiel Dasho, and now I'm going to draw this masked weaver. It's a small bird, I've never really seen it before, so... In my uh, efforts to draw every kind of <laughs> animal I ever see, I'm just going to start off seeing this round eye here. And... Uh, Before I worry about the details on the eye, I'm just going to rough in some of the the shapes of the bird. I'm seeing a sort of flattened skull. It's kind of slicked back hairdo. And listen, hopefully it will just be a quick little sketch for people who want to uh, keep up with my various life drawings and object drawings. Um, I'm using the side of the pencil, the shading side for most of this here and for little elements I'm just turning the pencil a little bit to get to the sharp knife edge part of it. and. Uh, so I'm kind of getting two things done at one time. There's a name for that. There's a, I'm just trying to be funny. So, um, so yeah, so we get this angle here and then puffed out chest a little bit. Kind of getting some morning sunshine and enjoying that daylight. Maybe warming up and drying off in the in the sun, and it's a lot of textured business happening here on the wing, and I don't want to push in and work on those darks right now. I just kind of want to keep keep going. This elegant curve here and the sharper darks there and we're getting into this place uh, sort of under the wing down up we can locate the part of his uh, feet And uh, just keeping it light and just drawing what we see. We see the uh, three fingers or toes just wrapping around the branch here. And uh, the branch is a little darker. And we can just have the branch kind of extending into paper a little bit and not really like worry about that extension too much there and uh, might as well give it a quick bit of the shading just I'm choosing to do circles here just to have it kind of have some roundness to it but this is such an early early step in the shading process that you could really just do whatever just to get a little tone on it so that it's a little more balanced with the rest of your picture. So moving on here. Got the let the bird's leg and in here with the fingers or toes. I keep on saying fingers, but I think they're probably closer to toes. And just moving it on. We'll just kind of let it be extended that direction, a similar amount that the, it was extended in the other direction for 
visual balance, I think. And again, with the little bit of shading and being mindful of the areas that we've covered and drawn already so that we're not uh, breaching any of those designated spaces. And if you look closely, you can see that the bottom of the branch is quite a bit darker. And so it doesn't hurt to get some of that represented now. And even have some of these areas where there's like a shadow from the toes. And uh, they might not pick up uh, extremely with a lot of high resolution right away, but uh, eh, it's good to draw those shadows in there. And uh, your brain can sometimes make more sense of them than, than you think uh, when you're first drawing them. And the viewer's eye will, will key into those little things almost subconsciously. So, just drawing in the shadows wherever you see them. And uh, speaking of drawing in the shadows where we see them, let's do that in some of this area. And with this pretty fluffy, kind of almost like down quality to the texture here. And uh, I'm just uh, using the soft side of the pencil and letting it move with the textures a little bit here. Um, and then for this area on the edge where I see it to be a little darker, just going with the edge and still not pushing down hard, just dragging along uh, to find the, the dark edges here a little bit where the contrast is much more stark so because it's uh, set against the blue of this, the bright blue of the sky there. And that bright sky blue creates this really nice silhouette on the edge. So let's keep moving. And the head of the bird is a little bit darker. A step or two darker than the the rest so we can uh, keep that in mind as we go through and as we Maybe give it a little bit of cross hatching. Now is a good time to do some of the eye here, the pupil, and the very bright shininess from the reflection, and then some. Uh, Kind of darker accents from around the, the eye area. And again, this is just a matter of just drawing what you see. And uh, if it doesn't come immediately, that's okay. This is the kind of drawing that's nice because it goes pretty quickly and if you want to try it three or four times, you can do that in the amount of time that it takes to maybe do some bigger, more complex drawings. Then. But uh, as long as you're drawing in lightly as you go and not pushing down, drawing hard lines or anything like that, um, the lightness of your touch should the lighter your touch, the uh, more forgiving your 
work is going to be later when you want to make adjustments. And so let's, uh, let's look at some of this space here. Under the wing, we see this really pretty dark shadow. And uh, it kind of lightens up as it cuts off into that direction. And uh, see this area here where, similar to uh, you know drawing hair on a person or something, I'm just kind of finding these shapes. And then once I've blocked out the shape here, uh, shading the individual shape sort of on its own, rather than trying to treat the whole thing as one thing or to treat each feather as its own little uh, is its own thing. Like it, it's similar to not wanting to draw every strand of hair. There's um, a little bit, you know, sometimes when the feathers are bigger, sure, go ahead and, you know, you draw the individual feather, but when they're much smaller, like a individual hair, it's, I think more important and, uh, or for conveying the sense of, that that visual information for conveying that to the viewer it's more important to get the shape and the sense of it the sense of the texture rather than to worry about the individual um, you know getting every individual hair accurate so like for this part you know I'm, I am kind of drawing individual hairs but it's more in the spirit of getting that textural sense rather than like trying to get each one to be accurate. Um, so it's kind of this balance of, you know, we see this dark feather behind can really help accentuate the texture there. And I'm going to just very lightly block in this feathered area and then treat it in different phases quickly. This phase here is a little darker, but not so dark as this one. And then there are these like little lines or something. I don't know what those are. And then a couple more markings down here. So those little things can help to give it that extra flavor and character that also, I mean, does, you know, and that in keeping with uh, drawing what we see and, uh, Definitely learning a little something about this bird as we draw, so that's cool too, because I can't remember the last time I saw a masked weaver and knew what I was looking at. So. And then maybe a little bit of the feather texturing here and some sharper lines here to indicate where the feathers are overlapping. He's got these sharp, sharp lines here. Looking good. Um, I hesitate to add more. It's at that point already. But we'll find a little, little spots where we can help it 
look more like the picture. And uh, one of those spots here is the, by the toes. And ooh, definitely don't want to leave this flat. So let's let's go with another round on the branch here and maybe add some texture. You know, not too much. I don't want to pull a lot of focus away from the the weaver here. And but I do want to uh, especially at the bottom in these areas. I do want to give this uh branch some roundness and some texture and not just have it look like it's a representational or abstract or it's too simple. Um, so the texture just kind of stretch out, have a little fun, you know, just look at those little squiggles and uh, wavy areas and just kind of draw what you see. And uh, it's very similar to drawing like a, the ripples in a glass of water or something like that. Maybe give them a little, see a little more of this silhouette on this leg here. And then a little more back here too. These highlight shadows can be important. And there's another sort of round of those two there. I'm just going to texturize some of this area a little more here. And this is very much like, like doing hair or something like that, where you see these places where just a little bit of uh, like a dark accent can really change the visual feel of that texture change the look of that and just get a quick look from far away and see what I think maybe a little more here and definitely want to keep it light Keep it kind of airy. Keep it, keep it puffy and fluffy. Um, yeah. So, thanks for watching, and I hope this has been useful to you. And see you next time.